What is going on guys, Custom RC Mods here, back with another video, it's been a little while, I believe a few months, um, and my last live stream was actually a failure, I believe, so um, unfortunately that had to happen. There's not been a lot of channel activity lately, which I've been trying to, but I've actually been trying to f switch them things out, so I basically fully upgraded my Slash for Wet 4 and so I sold that off, I know it's kind of sad, but I'm kind of just out of cars currently, and it's, it's really unfortunate but i've been in them for over 10 years and just the new things i've kind of risen to the top and then i kind of just cut it off on the bigger and better things like what's in this box which is kind of a continuous theme on my channel as i just have all these in the background so here we go this one is from flight test in their shipping department in california which i thought would be their uh, actual headquarters in ohio but actually they came from california for some reason but there we go all right so there's the seal it's broken let's go ahead and see what's inside and voila there she is right there the not new but it's newer than the old one blade inductrix fpv plus now this like i said is a plus model so it's a little bit bigger and i decided to go for this because i've had this is going to be my fifth tiny whoop if we're counting the inductrixes that i turned into tiny whoops and the actual inductrix fpv then i got another flight board and then we're on this thing and so yeah it's here we're gonna go ahead and open it up if i ever find my fingernails and yeah, so I decided to hit this because it's on a price cut sale. Um, actually, the original price on this thing was in the $140 range for this unit right here, which is a bind and fly model. And uh, actually, this thing had a severe price cut for the holidays, which is now at $60. That's 80 bucks off the original MSRP, which I am going to go ahead and take them up on that and get this thing to try out. So yeah, um, let's go ahead and take the actual thing apart. And yeah, so first off, what we get in there is we get this warning label. I have a few of these floating around my house. And then we've got this actual inductor's FPV manual, nice and concise. Uh, usually they either don't come with one or they're really kind of just a bunch of papers. I really like that. Um, so in here we have a charger, which is the uh, standard stick lipo charger which i actually have five of that i charge my other tiny whip batteries on and this one has the upgraded jsd 2.0 connector on it that accompanies this battery right here let's see if i can get it out with my pen there we go so these two are the duo with the upgraded uh, jst connector and yeah so it should be really really awesome now you can see we've got the actual drone itself. Now I'm interested to see how this thing feels compared to a tiny whoop. So we have the, this just really feels, oh my, this feels really solid, a lot more than I was expecting on this thing. So yeah, um, basically a few things that are different here. This is a 75 millimeter tiny whoop frame, uh, style frame, I guess. So basically that means that uh, it's 10 millimeters uh, kind of wider on the diagonal, I guess. So um, in that way, it's gonna have a lot more room for uh, tuning and adjustability. I feel like it's gonna be a little bit more precise. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I really like how this thing looks so far. Um, but yeah, we have this, of course, Horizon Hobby standard um, that came on the Yellow Whoop as well. But the uh, nice rigid shell, I'm probably gonna take that off pretty soon just because that is a lot of unnecessary weight and I'd like to put as little stress on the motors as I possibly can. And so yeah, we'll consider that. Uh, it has these eight millimeter motors on it that I'm super big fan of. Um, they will last a little bit longer as well as have a better flight time um, overall in terms of the efficiency of it. And will actually provide a lot more power and um, yeah, should be great. So yeah, we got four bladed props. These are really big props compared to the old tiny whip props that are a little bit smaller. These are 40 millimeter props that I'm probably going to go to three blades with here pretty soon. And it looks like this frame, I've heard that the frame is really reinforced, which you can see there's four struts on it. But what I've heard doing some light research is that these little spars do tend to break and the actual entire ducts 
can break a little bit easier even than the original tiny whip frame, which is kind of a downer in that case. But the Beta FPV Beta 75S frame, which is available on Amazon for like 10 bucks, should do the trick, and it's made out of a flexible material rather than this really brittle plastic. So yeah, again, we've got this upgraded connector right here, and uh, the battery slides in kind of at a vertical angle rather than the traditional tiny whip horizontal angle. It's really interesting because I'm getting uh, some tiny whip parts in to fix my tiny whip uh, in, in a few days. And so we're gonna have to see these things side by side when that happens. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get these batteries charging and we're gonna do another video that is based on the setup of this thing. Um, in all its glory, and I'm just gonna talk about all the little features and how to set it up with a Spectrum radio. Speaking of Spectrum radios, you guys know that I've been faithful and true to my uh, really old, I believe it's five years old now, uh, Blade MLP uh, DSMX transmitter. And so I actually decided to upgrade when I got this DX6E, which is a nice computer radio that I actually got the chance to get off of one of my great friends who uh, was upgrading to an eight channel transmitter. So yeah, really big fan of this thing. Uh, it's just a lot uh, bigger step um, and there's so much you can do. Uh, not only do the gimbals have more resolution and it, feel a lot, it feels a lot better, you have all these auxiliary switches that can do stuff and uh, you have timers, things like that. But one thing that I'm really gonna enjoy is the travel settings. So I was messing around with some uh, line of sight inductor features at, over the past few days where I can go into the travel setup, you probably can't see this, in the control setup, and I can go and just tune the yaw, which I usually like dumb down a little bit, the pitch, which I like full pitch, and I like a little bit less roll and then a little bit less throttle so that it's easier to manage all that and it makes it a lot more easy to fly and flies a little bit better. So yeah, really like that and it's something I really wasn't expecting to have all these great features. So that's about it for this video. Just two things that are new to the RC uh, collection here. Um, again, we're gonna be focusing more on air uh, related things now that I've got this nice transmitter. I think I'm gonna probably get into the airplanes and uh, things like that here pretty soon, start custom building, which is basically what this channel is founded on, uh, the custom kind of modifications that you can do for really inexpensive prices, while they're, whether you're either waiting for parts or maybe you decided that you don't wanna buy this really expensive part, so how can you fix it without um, spending too much money. So yeah, that's really, uh, this should really accomplish the goal of my channel and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm really sorry for this weird lighting. Again, we're in a little bit different uh, situation here, uh, kind of upstairs in my little computer area instead, but you'll see the next few videos here because my workshop is a mess right now. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.